everyone, Ian from Eurogamer here. Now, as all you lovely regular viewers will know, I'm a huge fan of the Far Cry series, and as E3 draws ever closer, something in Far Cry Land is awakening, and I've felt it. And while nothing official has been leaked yet, there are a few signs appearing that suggest a new Far Cry game will be announced during one of the big conferences. So, going on what little information is out there so far, and my excitement for the series in general, here are my predictions for what we might see feature in Far Cry 5's gameplay. Let's get out of here! OK, let's start this list off with what Far Cry 5 definitely is not, because there's been a little bit of confusion lately. Contrary to recent rumours, Far Cry 5 will not feature a return to Far Cry 3's Rook Island, and therefore it's unlikely to be a sequel or a prequel to the events surrounding Jason Brody's battles against Vass and Hoyt. So where did this rumour come from? Well, a couple of weeks ago, Ubisoft France released a cryptic post on their Facebook and Instagram accounts, which featured an image of Rook Islands along with some text that, when translated, read, an island we never really left. Does that remind you of something? Now, unsurprisingly, this got people super excited for a return to Rook Islands, the location of arguably the best game in the series. I've got to admit, I was hyping myself up for some kind of vast Montenegro origin story, perhaps a prequel where we got to see how the main man with the mohawk became so insane. That would have been awesome. He was one of the best video game villains ever created, and he was criminally underused and removed from the game rather abruptly. Shut the fuck up! Sadly, this theory was discounted a couple of days ago when a Ubisoft PR contacted Game Informer to clarify that the image of Rock Islands was simply a throwback post and therefore not a tease for anything. I'm sorry, but not giving Vars his own game really is the definition of insanity. What a shame. Get the fuck out of here, you chicken fuck! Run, Forrest! Run! <laughs> All right, so if Far Cry 5 isn't set in Rook Islands, then where is it set? Well, all signs at the moment are pointing towards the US state of Montana. The reason this is the most likely location isn't due to an official Ubisoft announcement, it's actually down to reports of a couple of location scouting trips that members of Ubisoft's production teams have made to the area. The first one was reported way back in November 2015 on the website 963theblaze.com, where one of the site's writers talks about how he got speaking to two men with French accents at the Rainbow Bar in Hamilton. They claimed to be employees for Ubisoft and told the man they had spent weeks surveying the surrounding locations, from Glacier National Park to Bitterroot Valley. Basically, they were on a standard location scout mission to get as much info as possible about Montana and its residents. This led to rumours of a spaghetti western-style Far Cry game being produced, which fits in with one of the choices featured on a leaked Far Cry survey also from 2015. The survey asked people to choose their three most preferred settings for a future Far Cry game, and one of the choices was a spaghetti western-style game set in the late 19th century Americas. This whole theory has been quiet for over a year, but then, just last week, a film crew was spotted at a church in northeastern Montana, filming a man fighting another man near a hanging bell. When asked what they were filming by writers for the Great Falls Tribune website, the producer, a man named Jeff Gillow, explained it was the sequel to an existing global franchise. Jeff, it turns out, has been involved in the creation of live-action adverts for Ubisoft before, most notably this one for Far Cry Primal, so the idea that they've rehired him to film a live-action Far Cry 5 promo isn't that far-fetched. After a bit of searching, I found photos of the filming location on a blogspot page called Casa Tomasi. Written by a Linda Wagner, the post goes into great detail on Wolf Point's Chelsea Church, which, although in a state of disrepair, does look like a fitting place to stage some kind of spaghetti western-themed shoot. A lot of them were saddle tramps or sod busters or drunken drifters looking to make a few bucks. The biggest unknown for Far Cry 5 so far is the time frame. 
There's conflicting information out there about when the sequel is set. The questionnaire I mentioned above suggests a game set in the late 19th century. Cowboys and Indians time, basically. If that's true, we could be seeing a Far Cry game with a Call of Juarez-style vibe, with traditional cowboy weaponry and a lot of bow and arrow combat. On the flip side of that, the rumours stated in the 963theblaze.com article suggest a modern-day spaghetti western, while a member of NeoGAF called Traum Novell posted a comment on a thread about the ad shoot stating, I've heard rumours of the next Far Cry taking place in the American Great Plains state and dealing with militias stroke survivalists. I'm not sure which one is more likely at the moment, but personal preference makes me lean towards modern day action. I got a little bored of bow and arrow combat in Primal and I love the idea of taking on a crazy bunch of tooled up survivalists or some meth making militiamen in and around heavily defended outposts in the Montana wilderness. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, America for the next Far Cry? I thought they were all about crazy, lush, tropical locations. I know that's what I was thinking, but then I read up about Montana's terrain, and to be honest, it actually sounds like a really good fit. Not only is Montana home to the Rocky Mountains, which will be ripe for that standard Far Cry first-person climbing and grapple-hooking gameplay we've grown to love, but its wide-open spaces also include the Glacier National Park, which is where huge stretches of wilderness give way to giant lakes, lush forests and snow-capped peaks. Basically, there's a little bit of everything here, meaning Far Cry's Montana should be ripe for exploration and adventure. Every Far Cry game needs a zoo's worth of animals for you to hunt, kill and craft into some kind of fashionable murder accessory. And a quick look on Wikipedia gives us a pretty good idea of the types of wildlife we'll be walloping in Far Cry 5. Some of the more lethal animals on the list are the black bear, the grizzly bear and the mountain lion. While there's plenty of mid-tier animals that will undoubtedly be nipping at our shins like the grey wolf, the coyote and the bobcat. Also native to Montana are two types of skunk, the striped skunk and the western spotted skunk. Could these stinky little bastards be the new honey badgers? I mean, there are American badgers in Montana as well so they could probably take up that role but I do like the idea of trying to avoid being squirted on by random packs of vicious skunks. Reptile-wise, we're sure to see the classic rattlesnake make an appearance, along with perhaps some snapping turtles near the water's edge. While high up in the sky, expect to be pecked at by things like vultures, golden eagles and falcons. Another big ingredient in the Far Cry pie is, of course, vehicles. This is, again, quite a hard one to predict, mainly because we're not sure yet of the exact time period. If we're in modern times, the game will most likely feature jeeps, pickup trucks and probably some crappy old family cars with smaller vehicles like quad bikes or maybe even dirt bikes making an appearance. If the rumour about dealing with modern day militia or survivalists is true, then some of these vehicles should also have big mounted weapons on board which could lead to some crazy cool action-packed car chases across the open plains. Maybe something that feels a little bit like Far Cry 2. If we do go back to 19th century Montana, transport will be less exciting and probably limited to horses only, unless there's some way the protagonist gets to control animals a la Far Cry Primal again. I guess we could get some cool shootouts on a steam train or something, but honestly there's not much else that can be done with 19th century vehicles, so cross your fingers for a modern day setting if you think horses are a little bit boring. Sorry Chris. The weirdest section in the aforementioned Great Falls Tribune story surrounds something called The Goatman, which is some kind of local urban legend that the production team was specifically interested in. 
Back over on the Casa Tomasi blogspot page, Linda goes into more detail about the legend, saying how the goat man is supposed to have leapt from the church belfry, leaving hoof-shaped indentations on the rock at the base of the tower where he landed. Could this mean we'll have some kind of side mission that features our protagonist trying to uncover the Goatman legend? It's not that unbelievable to think that Far Cry 5's story could have some supernatural elements. I mean, we had yetis in Far Cry 4, so I don't think it's too much of a stretch to imagine there being at least some kind of Goatman reference hidden in the game world. <laughs> So, there we go. Those are my predictions for Far Cry 5's gameplay. What do you think? Am I completely wrong? I could be completely wrong. I hope I'm not, because if I am, I'll look pretty silly when it's finally revealed. But either way, let us know what you reckon in the comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and do subscribe for more Far Cry 5 coverage in the near future. Thanks for watching and maybe check out these videos on screen now where I explore how I think all the Far Cry games are connected. They're good, solid, conspiracy theory style fun. Goodbye.